Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Okay. So this is um, this is a very special webinar, and it is intended for for the region here, specifically Australia and um, um, also New Zealand. So th this topic is is very um, special, and we talk about the the, the new um, a wide area licensing type under twenty eight gigahertz band. So we're going to to focus on on how to model a, a, a GSO or NGSO uh, Earth station and how to extract the, the, the boundary uh, contours for the purpose of um, uh, interference analysis or for the purpose of licensing um, in, in terms of establishing the, the license area boundary. So this webinar, it doesn't really um, going to address all the AWL requirements for the licensing. We're just going to talk about uh, the, the, the coverage boundary establishing the coverage boundary analysis. And it's going to focus on a planning tool, which is um, HTZ communication. So um, for, for we, we, we're going, I mean, the, the whole idea here is, is to establish what cells or, or what, um, what um, uh, HCIS, which is the, the grid, the grids, um, that you need to claim or you need to, to allocate for this wide area licensing. So for this, to achieve that, to achieve the boundary, we need to use a list of inputs. We're going to use the RRL archive. Um, it's not compulsory. You could, you could actually, if you have already the, the, the parameters of the site, the earth station, you could just go and, um, and punch in the, the parameters and do the modeling. But for the, for the sake of this um, presentation, I'm going to show you actually how we can connect to the RRL database, extract existing air stations, and use one of these air stations as example for the, um, for the simulation. And also we're going to use digital terrain and cloud models. I'm going to show you different um, um, uh, quality or different um, um, resolutions available to you from our um, database. We're going also to import from uh, from ACMA the ASMG, the Australian Spectrum uh, Map Grid, and the HCIS, which is HTIS. And for this simulation, I'm going to use HTC communication. The end goal, the end goal of this uh, demo or webinar, is to establish the geographical boundary of the license area contours. Okay, and extract the the cells in CSV and KMZ formats. So let's get started right away. So step number one, I'm going to run HTZ. So when you run HTZ, it's coming with a map of the whole planet. So this is telling you that you can start here. So you can, you can go download the area of interest. We have an archive for the entire planet in multiple resolution. So I'm going to focus perhaps on Australia. So I'm going to use the rectangle tool, draw rectangle tool, and then draw an area around the area of interest. So you go to the map download manager. That's where you download the maps directly in ATDI format. So you don't have to do conversion or translation from third party formats to ATDI. So we've done already the hard work of mapping the terrain and the clutter and sometimes the buildings uh, into, into our format. So you go to Map Download Manager and it will list down for you the maps that are available to you for download. So this is suggesting to me that I have for example, here, Perth, that part of Perth is in two meter resolution, okay? This one is Mel Melbourne in two meter. This one is Geelong in, in five meter. This one is New South Wales plus Victoria plus Canberra, okay? In, in 20 meter resolution. Now for the purpose of uh, this AWL analysis, I'm going to use a medium res, a medium resolution, something around 20, okay? 20 meter resolution, which is sourced from SRTM. 
But I just want to show you, you could work in the Northern Territory, you could work in Queensland, you could work in South Australia, Tasmania. So we already have the maps uh, per state. If you don't want to download the entire country, you can just be specific which area you want to download. So all you have to do is to choose the one. So I'm going to operate in New South Wales, Victoria, and ECT. This is the area of interest I'm going to uh, create a project. You see here we have on the left-hand side a download link. If you click on that download link, it will instantiate here the downloading process. So you see the tool has already now started downloading the, the map into the default directory, which is CATDI maps. So that's the process to download a map for an area of interest. And this is something you do once. You don't have to download a map every time. Now that map is usually coming uh, as a multi-map, which means uh, it's for the whole area, New South Wales, Victoria. It's too big. Most of the time, it's too big. You don't need to operate in the entire area. So I already have this downloaded. So you can file, open project. So you can go ahead and open that project. I'm going to use the project manager to open that state or these are three states. So when it's downloading, the file will be captured in C, ATDI, and maps. So that's where the files are, are downloaded to. And you can extract them. Maybe, maybe I just show you a quick example here. This is the New South Wales. So you see, there is a, um, a project file, and, and, and these are the default parameters, and this is the terrain. So effectively, it's sufficient just to open the PRO file project in order to load the area of interest. So let's go back to the tool here. Here we go. So I'm going to open the project. So I'm using the project manager, and then I want to point it to that project. Now, I already have the project um, ready under my, um, um, sorry, under my, um, here we go. So under, uh, under the webinar, so I already downloaded this one, and I just need to open that project file. That's all you need to do, open the project file. And once you click open on it, you'll see it's pointing to the digital terrain model. It's pointing to um, um, uh, a clutter file. And also you can, you can load an image, an image file. This is something we supply separately. Uh, it's an API allowing you to download Google Maps. So this is the, the, the project I'm going to open. Once you open, you notice right away, there's a sampling factor, three. This is suggesting the area is too big or suggesting your, your RAM is too small. If you don't have enough um, um, uh, physical memory in, on your computer, the software will, will resample. A resample means reduce the resolution. Okay, so this is the project open now. It's a blank project, there is nothing there. It's just the boundaries of these different states. Usually here I go straight to map properties just to, to familiarize myself with the resolution, and I downloaded it, and also the, the, the actual resolution loaded in the memory right now. So you see there is here a reduction factor three. So which means the resolution is not really 20 meter, it's 20 times the three, which is 60. So, so the source data is 20, but because of my computer specs, I couldn't load it as, six, as 20 meter resolution. The software reduced the quality to 60 meter to cope with it. That's perfectly fine because you don't need to work with the entire, with the entire country or the entire states. So we're going to zoom in the project to the area of interest in order to create a, a small project for your customer or for your project. So now, after we set up the project, after we, we open the project, I need to um, um, do some configuration. I need to also import from uh, the RRL database. So I'm going to import existing earth stations on the 28 gigahertz band into the tool directly. So to do this, you need to 
The same way, you use the rectangle tool, select a rectangle, and then you left to click here, you left to click here, so you're highlighting the area of interest, and then you go RRL data access. Okay, so this is this is the plugin. This is called RRL plugin. The purpose of this application is to interface the RRL archives with the tool. So it does the format translation and it is always up to date. It's using an, a server, online server, in order to, to capture the latest snapshot of the, the um, RRL database. So you see, this is a new interface. It's showing you the area of interest, where it is. That's the area you, you just draw. And now we could run a, 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 qu a query in, in this interface. So I'm targeting land mobile. That's including Earth Station as well in, the, in, this, in this application. So this application concept is you can run point-to-point -point analysis uh, uh, query, or you can run uh, um, uh, a device query, OK? So I'm going to do a device uh, a query, and then I'm going to target only transmit transmission, because I want to do the coordination for, for the, um, uh, the Earth Station. So the Earth Station uplink is, is um, um, classified as a transmitter. So this is, this is now what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to, to model the transmission site uh, for the Earth stations and then get the RF characteristics uh, and, and then do the modeling. So I'm going to target TX only. Now frequency range, if you press G on a keyboard, it becomes gigahertz. So you can target 27.5 gigahertz up to 29.5 gigahertz. So the query is running in that range. That's it, guys. So that's all you need to do. The boundary already established. You, you, and you mentioned it's a device kind of query. And then we are targeting transmission only. And that's the frequency range in gigahertz. Run the query. And easy. Here we go. That's all the list of devices that are in that boundary and in that frequency range. So this is going to help you locate your customer or your site, your air station. Okay, it's going to help you locate it. So you can see here the, the different information available to me. Frequency, authorization date, the bandwidth, polarization, antenna height, transmission uh, device type, and longitude, latitude, and the address. And you can see here we have the antenna type, and we have also the uh, licensee. So for, for this exercise, I'm going to um, target Starlink, for example. Let's see where they are. Starlink. So you can do the search directly here, filter. There you go. These are the Starlinks. And I'm going to be more specific. I'm really interested in, um, I'm really interested in uh, uh, Broken Hill as an, as an example, as a use case now. So look at the address, find the address. Okay, that's the address. So here we go. So Broken Hill. Um, so the top, the top ones. So from here until here, highlight them. Right click, keep selected rows. So I'm going to keep this one in the filter. And now add to HTC. That's it, guys. Simple. So what I just did, I just filtered the site of interest, the location of interest, and uh, I'm. Purposely, guys, purposely, I selected something with a high transmission power, 50 watt. And uh, you can see the ERP as well here. You can see the frequency range to 2.79. Uh, and then you can see here the antenna gain and, uh, and so on. So it, this is a decent e example I'm going to use. So you've done filtering. Now add HTZ. Done. It will close the app. And here you go. Done. So. Ah, it didn't do just do uh, Broken Hill, did all of them. So this is the site of interest I'm looking at. So you could change here the, the, the map layer to show the, the, the area. There you go, Broken Hill. OK, so this is the, the area I'm going to focus on in this um, webinar. So we use the RRL plugin to, to, to uh, interface with the RRL database and extract all the uh, earth station locations in the, in the area of interest and frequency range. 
So what you could do now, uh, we could isolate. We could isolate the site of interest. So let's choose maybe this one as an example. This one here. There's a number of sites here. Let's look at the first one. So this one is transmitting 50 watt and 49 antenna gain. And antenna height is 2. And then uh, this is a, a, a 800 meg. Okay, that's a good one. So let's pick this one. You click on it. And then you go isolate. So I isolated that site from all others. Let me switch to different source, um, Google Earth. Here we go. So this is the area of interest, and this is the site of interest. So after, after you select the site you want, you isolate it, Control R, Control R will remove everything else. Delete all the deactivated objects, yes. So now we're left with one site in my project, and this is the area of interest. Now, to make things more interesting, you can click on that site and go to the site tab and add the radius here, say 10 kilometers. And that should show you a ring around it. So this is the, the 10 kilometer area. So I'm going to focus my project on that site in that range. So you use the rectangle tool again, and then let's do cutting. I'm going to do a cutting. So that's what I do usually. I start with a big project for the entire country or entire state, and then I make from this smaller projects. And these small projects are easy to manage, easy to archive, and easy to come back to. And you create an isolation between your, your master database and that project. So I'm going to zoom into the area like this, and then change area resolution. This has multiple advantages. One of the advantages, it, it goes back to the best resolution, 20 meter. That's the first advantage. Your computer become capable of managing this. So you go sampling factor one. That's it, done guys. So I've, I just finished cutting. So the tool is deallocating the memory for the whole project. And now we have only one project, small project, easy to manage. So this project now is is done. Now let's go and save it. Save it as. Let's go save it. So everything we've done is now just in the memory. We did cutting in the memory. Now we need to go and save this project. Save project as, and then uh, uh, choose a destination. So I'm going to put it in. I'm going to put it in um, in that project under the webinar. So under the webinar, I'm going to create here uh, a new project. So let's call it Broken Hill, for example. So I'm going to make a new folder, Broken Hill. So let's go, uh, save it, Broken Hill, 28 gigahertz, AWL. So save the project and hit OK. All right, done. This is a very important step because now you created a separate project. Here we go. It's a separate project, self-maintained, self-contained, isolated, small, easy to manage. Okay? And the software already now um, um, loaded that project. So the project is now good to go. For the um, for the simulation, so I'm going to do uh, a number of um, scenarios. First, let me show you what the layers um, available here. This is the digital terrain model. So this is the digital terrain model available in that area. And for the record, this is 20 meter, 20 meter resolution. And on the top of this, you also have clutter. So you can see the clutter here. So this is classified, the yellow. The yellow is classified as, as urban. 
and we have a certain height assumption. This height assumption is going to uh, be used in the, in the propagation model predictions. And you can see we have industrial area and we have mining. We have mining and the mo classified as mining, but it doesn't have any elevation information. So you can see here the, clara, the, the different clutter classes, and this is going to come very handy uh, as we do the, the um, simulation. You can do simulation with and without clutter. So you can see uh, this is the, 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 where the earth station is on the left, and here we have the digital terrain model for the area, and these uh, colorful blocks, are the, this is, this is the, the, the classification. The, the um, area classification, urban, suburban, rural, uh, forest, vegetation, and so on. So uh, you need to visit um, these uh, uh, clutter settings to make sure they reflect uh, your experience with that area. Okay, so you can change this and the height assumptions if you need to. So now let's talk about the earth station model and show you what kind of configuration you could do. So you could go back like this, left click, you select it, and you go to parameters. This is your earth station model right now. So that earth station is operating on a 50 uh, watt transmission power. There's a 49 dBi antenna gain. Obviously it's a, a good size dish, maybe nine meters. And we've got the frequency 2.79, antenna height is two, and that's the bandwidth. And you can see here the address, SpaceX Satellite Earth Station Broken Hill. You can see here we have the license number. And we have here the, um, I think this is the device registration number. And here we have the um, some default antenna. We'll come back to the antenna. And here you can see uh, the rest of the parameters. So first thing, we need to, we need to convert this from um, from uh, to 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 uh, to what per her, per megahertz? So if we if we look at the the, the limits, so the, the the limits are defined by ECMA uh, as as for example dB watt per per uh, meter square per megahertz. So we use they're using megahertz uh, as as a, as a, a PFD limit. So we need to to, to use. Um, we need to, to um, normalize our model to, to one megahertz as well. So this model is based on, on 800 meg. And this transmission power is allocated to the, to the entire channel. So you need to convert this into one megahertz. To do that, it's simple. You just click on this option here. And then you go to the power unit converter. So this is the bandwidth, 800. And I'm going to, trans to, 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 to translate 50.11871 into, into a watt per megahertz. So that's, that's the transmission power. It should be 0 0.0626 per megahertz, roughly. So you copy it, you paste it here, and then you could change this one now for one megahertz. So you know that this, this, power, um, this power setup is corresponding to one meg of spectrum. So now I did the, 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 um, the, the normalization uh, to one megahertz. Um, we finished with the general tab. That's all you need to do here. You need to look out for the, the antenna gain, for the transmission power, and for the frequency, antenna height, and bandwidth. Once, once you're comfortable with this, you jump to the pattern tab. Now in the pattern, it depends, guys, what you're doing. If you're doing a, a GSO or NGSO, so I'm, I'm more interested here in NGSO because it's more challenging in, by nature because um, because the antenna is rotating to track to track the the the, the constellation. So um, so what we're gonna do? I'm, I'm, we're going to show you both examples, GSO and NGSO. So for the um, for the antenna, we have here. Um, multiple ITU models. Now, the one you should be looking at is ITU uh, 1855 and ITU S 18, um, uh, 1428, these two models here. So you have to follow the, 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 uh, the guidelines um, of, of the regulator. So for interference purposes, usually we use some ITU models. We don't use the actual antenna model. 
You could, okay, but it's not always available to you uh, accurately. So ITU models are they have some some uh, um, some security margins, some fudge factors in them to 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 um, uh, to give you a safe uh, analysis. So I'm going to use, for example, uh, an an NGSO. So for NG, for NGSO, I'm going to use a 1428 model. So currently it's pointing north, okay, pointing to the true north, zero. It has no tilt. You could put up tilt if you want, okay? So up tilt is, is something like, for example, okay, 10 degrees, up tilt. But in fact, no need to, okay? Unless you're doing GSO. If you're doing GSO, you have to point it correctly for both uh, azimuth and tilt, okay? But if you're doing NGSO, the tool will take care of this, um, the range of variations. So for now, for the NGSO purposes, I'm just going to stick with zero, zero, okay? Zero, zero. And the tool will take care of um, um, setting the right value during a simulation. But here you need to make sure you have the right antenna model. Otherwise, your entire analysis become incorrect. So we are pretty much done here. You could ask the tool to compute the beam width if you need it. So the tool estimated this antenna beam width to two degrees. And you could also ask the tool to estimate uh, based on a parabolic antenna, a parable, uh, estimate the, the antenna size, okay? So the antenna size estimate is based on, on your antenna gain that you define here, and it's based on the frequency that you have, okay? So, so these are calculated, and they're not needed for the simulation, but they are calculated as information for the user. So the most important thing here is the EIRP, the EIRP and the antenna model must be correct, in addition to the antenna height. So now let's jump to the um, uh, uh, site tab. Now site tab is, uh, you, you already have set up the radius just as a guideline to show you uh, the, the 10 kilometer radius, okay? Now you could, you could add a step, for example, five kilometers here. Five kilometer step means it's gonna show you two rings, two concentric rings. So one ring at 5K, the other ring as 10K. Now jump to the advanced tab. Advanced tab, you need to set up here your sensitivity or your what you define as boundary. What is your PFD limit for the boundary? And for that, I'm going to use uh, the, the 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 limits set up in the um, in the recommendation. So here I'm using neg ninety one. So you see here neg ninety one dB watt per square meter per megahertz which is equivalent to neg 111.4 dBm per megahertz at 28. This is correct only at 28. So you need to, to, to add the frequency factor in order to, to calculate the, the device boundary uh, correctly. So you can see here, this is transmitter without an active antenna. Active antenna means a smart antenna. A smart antenna is the one that can do performing and, and adaptive gain and so on. So I'm going to use that limit, neg 111. Now, that limit can change from country to country, from, from uh, requirement to requirement, okay? So I'm, I'm not here discussing um, how this number came about. I'm just showing you how you can use that number in order to generate uh, the contour or generate or establish the boundary of that license. So here you can define the value coverage threshold. They say, all right, it's neg 111, for example, estimated to neg 111 or neg 112, this number can change. So that's it. Now we hit OK. So now you can see, guys, how we have a ring at 5K. You can see the unit, you can see here the, the, the number 5 and here 10. If for any reason you don't see this ring, you can go to um, object properties and then you can establish. Um, um, there by checking that box, display extended radius. So control S to save your settings. So, so far we have a project in 20 meter resolution and we have, uh, and we have um, uh, an earth station model, which uh, we use the RL database to, to create it. But again, guys, you could add a station manually if you know the coordinates, if you know the coordinates, you could go and add station from coordinates. You put the coordinates of the site, and then you could um, um, just add it manually, and then configure it manually. 
you don't have to use uh, the the especially if it's a new site it wouldn't be it wouldn't be in the in the database so you have to actually generate that site manually so now this is done um let's do some settings here go to the settings so in the settings here you can put the limit if you don't want to do 10 kilometers you want to do five kilometers only you could okay if you don't think uh, you need to go 10 kilometers you could you could limit this by five kilometers and here you must always use threshold from station, from station and NDBM, which means the boundary, the, the, the device boundary or the, 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 the coverage boundary is established in the advanced tab here, NEG 111 DBM. All right, now let's set up, let's set up the propagation model. Before we do that, um, so let me show you what, what, is, what, what I'm gonna do next. So what I'm gonna do, I'm going to predict the signal leakage or or or, or um, signal um, um, from the uplink captured on on the ground at five meter height so i have a virtual receiver above the terrain which is five meter height and we're going to predict the signal leaked from the earth station to that position so here the idea is to check the for example the impact on on uh, on terrestrial system such as 5g for example so, so the idea is to predict the signal from the Earth station, not, not to the satellite, not to the orbit, but to a terrestrial receiver, a victim, to a terrestrial victim. And that terrestrial victim is, is five meter above the terrain. And we're gonna do this by, by, um, um, by studying a minimum elevation of that satellite. What's the minimum elevation from the horizon? And we're going also, this is top view, we're going to also, um, um, we're going to iterate or we're going to rotate the antenna from from a certain degree to a certain to, to a certain degree so then the, the antenna is is a steerable and it is a tracking uh, uh, antenna so we're going to um, um, run the simulation automatically from that from that angle to that angle in in that elevation in that minimum elevation So first, to do this, you need to have a propagation model. Choose propagation model. Now, um, for, for, for the local market here in Australia, we, we, and for, for, that, for, that, for that purpose, AWL, uh, for the 28 gigahertz, you're supposed to use the ITU 5 to 6, 14 as a minimum, okay? So I have here ITU 5 to 6, version 11, and version 15. So that's it, guys. All you need to do is select your propagation model, the one you're going to use. So I'm going to run a simulation twice with a free space only and with ITU 5 to 6, just to show you the difference and also to let you experience the antenna, the impact of antenna on, on, on the uh, device, on the boundary of that license. So you could start first with a, with a, a model, which is only free space without the fraction. And like I said, this is just for your experiment and to understand I'm going to come back here and then do a proper propagation model. But now, just to speed up things up and also to give you an idea how the antenna pattern look like on the ground, I'm going to use just a free space, just a free space uh, uh, formula. So this checking that box and removing the fraction and removing some path, it means um, you are removing any uh, clutter or, or terrain effect, okay? You are just removing this information. So that's it. Now we have we have everything ready uh, for the for simulation. So let's compute. You click on the station, you select the station name, because you might have multiple earth stations here. You go to coverage and then you go to terrestrial station coverage calculation. So guys, the nature of the problem here is that your, the antenna is is rotating antenna. So that the antenna can take multiple positions. So we need to, to uh, instead of modeling 100 or 60 uh, earth station at different positions, you just use one earth station model, and then you let the software um, um, swing it from X degree to Y degree, and then to capture the maximum signal in every, um, uh, in every iteration. So you go to terrestrial station coverage calculation. So this is a very nice function. We always had it it's in the software. So those those who already have a tool, they, they already have access to, to, this, um, um, to this function. 
So this function allow me to use um, uh, user-defined uh, uh, information. For example, I'm going to swing it from 300, 350 up to 10 degrees. Okay, so you can see here, um, and I'm going to use a minimum elevation of 10 degrees. So what I'm trying to do, guys, I'm trying to do this. So I said to the tool, I want to start from here. Okay, I'm going to start from here. And here is a 350, a U350, correct? So 350 degrees up to, I'm going to run it a couple of times. And, and that's why I'm using free space model because I can run a simulation very quickly up to 10 degrees. So it's not changing too much. And also for, for the minimum elevation here, I'm using here a fixed value 10 degrees. Now you could, you could uh, do a range as well. You can do a range in both of them. Okay, and do a range in, in both, horizontal and vertical. So that's it. Now the tool is showing, me, showing you that the, the, the angles, so it's going to operate in that 10 degree angle here to the left and that 10 degree angle on the right, and it is elevated. This is the horizon line here. This is the horizon line. It's going to operate slightly above the horizon, which is 10 degrees. And the victim height or the, 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 the computation height will be at 5 meter, okay? So five meter, this, this is the requirement of the AWL. So we're gonna use five meter target. Five meter target and, and also neg 111.4 dBm as a, as, a, as a signal level target. That's it. You put the degrees and then you, the elevation and then you run it. Here we go, it's, on, it's in action now. As you can see, it was very quick. Because I'm using free space again, guys. Please don't don't um, mix up this one. I'm using free space here on purpose because I want to show you how the antenna pattern look like. They allow you to validate it and also to, to visualize it. Because once I put the ITU five to six model, the tool will calculate, will compute the fraction losses and subpass losses, clutter effect, and so on. So we're going to run multiple simulation to to um, um, help you experience the whole thing. So how it look like. So this is a, a default palette. A default palette is going down to neg 111 dBm. That's exactly what I want. That's because I set up, because I set up the threshold at neg 111 dBm. This is cutting off at neg 111. And in fact, you can read the value here as I move. So you can see it's neg 111.1 dBm. Here. And you can come, okay, come closer to the side, and then you can see what's happening. Now, someone might say, what is this on the side here? So what's on the side is, is side lobes. These side lobes are also on the move because the earth station is rotating, and so the side lobe will rotate. So that's why you see this pattern. Now, let's try again, but this time with a slightly different range. So you go to coverage. Terrestrial station coverage. Now you go from say um, three, um, from three uh, three thirty up to thirty degrees. So this is guys. This is that means that your 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 middle point is still the north. Okay, I'm just swinging thirty degrees to the left and thirty degrees to the right. Okay, that's what I'm doing. You can swing in the way you want. You just need to know what is the, the, the um, different positions you want to evaluate. So now it's going to take slightly more time. It's still fast, thanks to the free space model. Let's see what happens to the side lobes. The side lobes become almost like Omni. There you go. I'm about to close that loop, you see here? It's coming like a circle now because the, the lobe will be here, 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 and so on. Okay, so it is under five kilometers, that's for sure. Okay, so that's, that's the, the, the coverage uh, uh, for the NGSO. We'll come, we'll come back to the analysis, the importing, the grids, and so on. 
But I want to show you what, what if you want to do a GSO? If you want to do a GSO, uh, you need to um, um, put the actual orientation of, of that um, earth station. With the GSO case, it's pointing to a, a certain fixed uh, position in the sky. Okay, it's no more rotation. So it becomes an even simpler problem. You just need to do coverage computation. No need to do that range computation. So you could actually uh, um, um, put, put the actual azimuth and up tilt, okay, and then do a coverage predictions for the, uh, for the GSO. So GSO is very simple. You also you need to use the, the, um, the, the other propagation model, which is 1855 uh, for, um, for the GSO. So let, let's continue with this. Um, let's now change propagation model and see what happens. So I'm going to go a change propagation model this time. So I'm going to use the ITU 5 to 6 as is, okay? So which is, which is adopting a, a deterministic propagation model based on Delta Bullington method for diffraction. So if you, want to, if you search ITU 5 to 6, you say it talks about uh, a different diffraction uh, um, techniques. So we're using here the Delta Bullington. So all you have to do, really, just check that box, and you are pretty much good to go. So now you change the rules of physics from free space into uh, an ITU 5 to 6 deterministic models. Now, here you may want to do the computation with and without clutter, okay, depending on your requirements. So if you can pass without clutter, or you can, uh, uh, you want to go worst case, for example, you can make a decision, okay, I'm going to run a simulation without clutter and with a clutter and then compare the results. So I could do that uh, very easily by uh, going to the clutter settings, for example, here, clutter settings. And then you could uh, put the height to zero. If I put all the heights to zero, that means you are canceling the impact of the clutter. So cl buildings now no more have elevation. They can't block the signal. Okay? So uh, uh, now I remove the, the, the clutter effect. So now let's do the computation. So previously was this, right? So previously was going up to roughly four kilometers. And you can hit F2 here, F2 on that location, and then move the mouse to get the distance. So this distance here is going up to, according to this, is 4.28 kilometers. You can read it here. So it's going up to 4.24 kilometers. So let's run the computation one more time, okay? But using ITU 5 to 6. So coverage, terrestrial station coverage. So here I'm going now to go back to 350 and 10 degrees. Because I'm, I'm worried if the five to six is gonna be slow because I'm using 20 meter data and it is 10 kilometers. I might need also to reduce it to five kilometers just to be on a safe side. In fact, you should, you should in fact, because, because free space did not make it five kilometers. Why, why do, am I using five, uh, five kilometers for, for the uh, five to six model? So I'm gonna go and change the limit to five kilometers that's going to help you speed up things. So um, that looks better now. Uh, let's calculate the coverage for this. Click on it and then go to coverage and then terrestrial station coverage. So I'm going to go 350 to 10 degrees. So this is 20 degrees. 10 degrees left, 10 degrees right. And five meter target as usual. Hit OK. You see, it is slightly slower. So that's why I wanted to start with a free space model, and I wanted to establish the, the, the maximum range possible, which is under five kilometers. So that will make my deterministic propagation models uh, uh, a bit better. So this is now how the coverage look like, and oh, the boundary, the, the, the boundary, how it look like. And that's because of the terrain, okay? It's, it's because of terrain. Previously it was free space, terrain, terrain did not exist in the free space. Uh, I'm just using free space, like a flat, flat earth model. So now, now we have a deterministic model to help us uh, compute things. So I could run analysis here to, to, to understand what is going on with the area. You see here, the area here, there's a terrain. This is, this is a side view at the top, and this is here top view, okay? So I'm looking at two things at once, top of view in the bottom, and a side view at the top. So you can see why coverage has been cut off here and did not cut off here. Okay, so here there's a nice line of sight. Here there is terrain in between. So that terrain is acting as a natural barrier, and thankfully it is limiting the, your your license area, limiting your your coverage you're going to claim. 
So you see here, same same issue here. This is a broken hill. There's a it's a mining area. And there's there's a mine activities here. And you see here, so it's been cut off. Here it's like a to, a, on on the top of the hill. So it, it is getting good reception. Here is not. All right. So now we established what's going on. If you wish as well, you can compute the signal. But we established now the boundary. Now next. What I usually do, are, uh, you don't have to deal with different colors. You can you just want to establish one boundary, one coverage. So you can go to the palette here and then specify your criteria. So this is, say, uh, um, area, area boundary. Sorry. Area boundary. So you can, you can make one color and that's it. Now you can run the computation again with clutter. If you want to, if you want to run it again with the clutter, okay. So you could use uh, the settings. Uh, you, you can you can based on your experience in the area, you can estimate, for example, the forest. So there's not much forest here anyway. Uh, there's some trees here. Um, uh, probably not forest. So forest, let's say twenty. There's no forest. So it should be okay. Um, suburban. Let's say suburban uh, height is say four meters on average. Okay, on average. And then rural say uh, this is a four, four meters, this is five meters, and then urban say is is uh, um, um, seven meters here, and uh, industrial say it is uh, um, um, say eight meters, okay. Forest uh, hydro and um, there's no high urban anyway. Parks parks let's say it's not much uh, trees, it's just a small trees like two meter, okay. There's no high rise. That's it. So if I use the settings as an estimate uh, based on uh, the area here. And I run the computation one more time with the clutter effect. Okay, so now I'm going to do it with the clutter effect. So I'm going to um, uh, click again here, and then do the coverage, and then terrestrial, same angle. So let's see how clutter is going to help shape shape the the the, the boundary. You have to be a, a, a realistic with your estimate for the clutter height, or you have to use our default settings. But when you do look. When you do simulation in a remote area, uh, I suggest you, you don't overestimate the internal height. I mean, the, the, the environment height. Because obviously the CBD is different than uh, other areas. So this is the, 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 the coverage impact. So in fact, I mean, in that, in that line of sight, the immediate, in the immediate area in front of the antenna, there's not much clutter anyway. But lucky this area is not, um, there's no overshooting in the area or the area or the area here industrial. So this is the, the, the coverage, the boundary. Next is I want to show you how you can export this to Google Earth uh, as, a, uh, as a contour and also how to import the, um, how to import and analyze and establish uh, the, the cells, the cells that you are going to um, uh, allocate. So I'm going to import the, the Australian Spectrum Map Grid, the HCIS into this software and then give you uh, or extract a CSV file with the list of cell IDs uh, overlapping with the coverage. So first, let me do the contour because it's, it's also simple. So file, uh, share, and then you can export. Uh, no, sorry. The, the, the best way, the best way, in my opinion for this, is to go to coverage and then vectorize coverage side by side and you establish a shape file. Shapefile is a, is a good format. You can exchange it with uh, uh, RGS, MapInfo, uh, QGS, uh, Google Earth, okay? Google Earth Pro. So, and, and this is a really suitable for, for contour, polygon, for, for uh, boundary. It's very good for boundary. So, and, and if you have a number of sites, 10, 15, 20, the software will batch the process and dump for you uh, uh, an individual shapefile for every site. So I'm going to choose a location where I'm going to um, dump it. I'm going to put it in my um, my webinar folder here. Maybe put it on the broken hill here, and then let's see. Let's let's call this export here. I'm going to generate a folder export. So here we go. AWL export and hit OK. That's it. Very quick. It's done. Now let's come back here. Here we go. The tool created for you a shape file. I keep these shape files together. Now let's open this in, in Google Earth.
So file open and make sure you change this to the these extensions and navigate. This is my AWL number three. Apply as template, not for now. Hit OK. Check that box. Activate it. Here we go. So this is the, the contour for this area. And like I said, this is easy to exchange with anybody. You can choose the color you want. And you can choose the transparency you want. And you can put the outline you want. Here we go. So this is the area. And you can see here some information. Uh, the address and the, the, the license number and so on. So the job of the tool does not stop here. So what, what I wanted to show you um, is how you can actually uh, download. You can download the, the, the Australian map grid and then use it in the software directly to find the overlapping cells. This is the website um, on ACMA website. <coughs> Just be careful. This is divided into uh, Western, uh, Western Australia, Eastern Australia, and then Central Australia. You have to download the right file. And then you see here we have zero, zero, and we have zero. This is the, the, the scale of the level. So um, I've downloaded all of them, and I already have them here. So these are the files, and I extracted them. So you could work with level zero or level double zero. Level double zero is even smaller. It's more granular, OK? So you could work with, with either one of them, depending on your requirements and depending on, on the footprint that you are working with. Now, ideally, you would do zero, zero, um, but it would be uh, it would take more time to import because it's a massive, uh, probably one, one gig file or something. So you can see there is a 2.7 gigs. So just the shape files are, are, are massive. So um, for, for the sake of this um, uh, webinar, I'm going to use just a level zero because it's slightly smaller, so it's easy to work with. Okay, but in, in the real work, you need to decide which one is more providing you more uh, uh, granular results or the proper results. So now let's come back here. Now I need to import these license area boundaries, uh, or, or sorry, the, the, the grid, the, the spectrum map grid. I need to import it into the software. And you could drag and drop directly to, to the map, but I pref um, it won't give you the option to configure. I'm, I'm very interested in configuring the mapping of the, the IDs. So go to File, Import, and then go to Vector Layer, and then Shape Polygon. So you can import the polygons directly here. And because the area is small, so we don't have to deal with the entire country. So import the polygons. So you browse, you navigate to your shape files. I'm, I'm going to use level zero, not double zero, but you could use double zero, OK? Just for this exercise and make my life a lot easier, you don't have to wait 10 minutes for the importation. And very important, you need to map so you can map the comment in the software, which this is a software um, um, information comment. I can map it to the, the, the attribute in that uh, uh, spectrum grid file. So if you want to capture the, the level zero, the name, the, 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 the name of that uh, or the identity or the, the unique identity of the um, cell, I will show you. I'm going to import many cells, which is a grid. And then each cell will, imp will has its own ID. So you need to map it, map it here, OK? And you could map the, 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 the info. So there's two things you can map, comment and info. You could map it to another field if you want. For example, level one, which level one it, it, uh, it's falling under, OK? So uh, you can choose what information you want to map from the shapefile into the software. And this is very important, OK? You need to map the information you need. That's it. So now hit OK and the importation process will take place. Might take two, two or three minutes. It's progressing uh, relatively okay. So during that time, so you see we have here multiple, multiple hierarchical cells uh, or, or um, cell identifications. So in, in our archive, our the map our map the archive we have the um, we have the one arc second uh, for entire Australia. We also have the three arc seconds, and we have the nine arc seconds. So depending on your interest, um, you could use either one of them. 
So uh, one arc second is uh, 30 meters resolution, and uh, the, the three arc second is 90, and then the nine is 270. So almost there, halfway. Uh, by the way, guys, uh, I think we, we should also, uh, we we'll also give some time for questions uh, towards the end. So if you have any questions uh, in, in writing, you could write it now, and then uh, we could, um, um, we could collect the information and we could we could unmute your microphones if you have any question you want to uh, do live. Just leave a comment and then we can unmute your microphone. So we do it. We do it once we finish uh, this this um, 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 demonstration. All right, almost finished. Thank you for your patience. Here we go. So these are the the the, the cells in in that area. Control S. So now we need to establish. You see, this is um, uh, probably it's better to import zero zero. In fact, okay. It's better to import the zero zero ones because it could give you more granular um, um, outcome. But fair enough. I mean, just for the sake of this um, um, exercise. So now we need to establish from that grid which cells overlapping with the coverage. Now sometimes it's not easy. Sometimes the coverage can be like going going two kilometers, three kilometers, overlapping with over hundred cells. Now this this example here is not the best. It's only overlapping with a couple of them. So you could easily pinpoint. Uh, uh, these um, cells easily. But like I said, if you do the double zero, it's going to be a lot more cells on the map. And then it becomes it become tedious job to extract. So lucky for us guys, we have a nice function in the software to automatically isolate the, the polygons that overlap with the coverage following the criteria you want. So you go to coverage, you go to um, a vector, sorry, you go to coverage, or maybe map. You go to map, vector, and then you go here. Isolate vectors from result. Isolate means does not isolate does not mean delete. It means activate activate the view. So display the polygon which is which is overlapping with the result. Okay, and deactivate. Just make it dormant. Shut it down. Don't display it. Don't display the polygon which does not overlap with the coverage. That's what it means. So this function is going to make your life a lot easier. Okay, you don't have to go to Map Info or JS, run run a query, a geospatial query, and then establish the overlaps and so on. So you can do it fairly simple. Simple. So isolate vectors from a uh, uh, result, and then it's asking you, what do you define result as? What is result? Is it uh, is it neg uh, fifty dBm, neg hundred dBm? So you need to tell the software. What is the, the power range that you're looking at? So you see here at the bottom, neg 111 dB, dBm, which is equal to 55 dBU. So the software usually presenting always two units, dB microvolt per meter, which is a field strength unit, and a dBm unit. So you could use uh, uh, either one of them. So, But for this function, you have to use this value as is, 55. 55, you see here, it is 55. In the bottom of the screen, you see it's a 55 the value. And which um, which polygon, or, or, or what, what is the definition of overlap between between the polygon, which is a cell, and the coverage? You mean 100% of the polygon is covered? Or 50%, or 10%, or 1%? So you can say, if, if, if 2% or more, for example, if 2% of the area, of, of the polygon, you see there's so many polygons on the map, each one of them, the software will check the criteria is 
the, the, the amount of a blue. You see that blue? The amount of a blue intersecting uh, 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 in, with that polygon. So I'm telling the software, if it is 2% or above, then it's a legit, okay? So you could come up with the figure you want. In fact, you could say, all right, 0.1%. So even there is slight overlap between coverage and cell, this cell I must claim it, okay, as a device boundary or as a boundary. So I'm gonna go with 2%, hit okay, that's it, done. So now you see the software activated and the, 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 in, the intersecting, intersecting cells and deactivating all the other cells. So my criteria was 2%. You could run it again with 50% if you want, or 40% or 20%, depending on the criteria. And not just this, the software also listed for you the, the cells. Done. I mean, this is pretty much done now. That's what you wanted to have. You wanted to know what cells, what, uh, what uh, um, um, cells in that grid uh, overlapping with the coverage. Again, guys, this is very simple here. You've got only one, two, three, four, five, but, but the, the, it, can be, it can be more complicated. There's a brown one here, and there is also here um, uh, other ones. So one, two, three, four, five. So one, two, three, four, five. So this is pretty much done. If you go list it, you can now operate with Excel spreadsheet, and then you can attach it to, to, to the license. So here we go. And not just this, it's also telling you what is the percentage. This is what you need to pay attention to. The, the, so I, I, I opened, uh, I mapped two information, right? This is the, the level zero, this is level one. So I mapped two information. So you need this, and this is the coverage uh, percentage. So if you want to make your own uh, uh, decision, maybe 3% is not worth it, or it's worth it. So it's up to you, depending on the methodology you're following. So you can see uh, well, we, what is the cell or what is the cell? Uh, uh, what is the, the the cell overlapping with the coverage, and what is the percentage of it? So um, after that, you could actually change the color. So you can say, "All right, uh, go to map uh, vector layer, and then go modify activated vectors." So you could change the color to nine, which is red. Okay, and then you can go back to um, you can go to back to. Uh, uh, Control V, so Control V will activate everyone else. So these are the, the, the ones, that's the red. Okay, I'm gonna repeat this, I'm gonna repeat this one, one more time. So map, um, a vector layer, and then isolate, isolate by, uh, by results. 2% is the criteria. And here we go. That's the, these are the figures. Now, if you need to export the polygons to Google Earth as well, you could. You can go um, and share, export to Google Earth, vectors. So share, export to Google Earth, the vectors. And then you could go and export the vectors and put it in, put it in the project. I'm gonna put it here. Rock and Hill, export. So, So this is the 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 uh, um, HCIS, and it, it, this is level zero. HCIS L zero. So I hit OK. Excellent. You can change the color if you want, and you can make it uh, uh, outline. So you see, because there's a slight overlap here, this one and this one, and also this one, is being captured as an area. Now, um, this is based on level zero. You could also save this one, file save as. Save it um, in the analysis as well. All right, so you've got everything now. You've got the the, the KMZ, which is the the um, polygons, the the I mean the cells. 
and you've got the the the, the, the boundary you've got the boundary of um, of this and also you've got the 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 list of the files the list of the um cells so that's that's how easy guys it is to um to extract the list So we, we covered pretty much the, 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 all the topics. Um, and, but again, guys, I just want to um, bring to your attention that if you want to do um, a, a fixed elevation and, and a fixed orientation, say uh, 300, and you want to model this as a, um, as a, a GSO, as a GSO, not a GSO. So you just need to put the, the correct antenna. And uh, you need to put um, the, um, the actual orientation and just um, do a coverage prediction. No need to do the, the range calculation. Put the victim height and put um, the, the range, and then you compute. Okay, see how it looks like in this area. So this is GSO. So um, that's it pretty much, guys, for, for, um, for this webinar. So we, 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 um, we, we talked about um, the, the, the inputs that you need in order to build such models and the importation of the earth station parameters, and then doing, doing the configuration for free space, doing configuration for ITU-526, and then doing the coverage prediction for GSO and NGSO. So we, if you wanted to uh, also how to export this information to CSV, Google Earth, and so on. If you have questions, um, um, this is your time. Uh, I know some of you have other works to do, so some, some people started leaving. Um, there's still a lot um, in this webinar. So we're gonna give you like a 10 minutes um, um, to ask your questions. So the, so the idea is that you guys send, send us a message, just broadcast a message, say I have a question, and then I can um, um, uh, unmute you so you can raise a question. Um, Farad, are you with me? Um, do you see any questions? Anybody had any question? Uh, yes, uh, yeah, maybe you can uh, uh, Gavin asked a question about the units of the coverage limit. Uh, so his question is, can you show the units of the coverage limit is based on? So, so the, the, the software unit um, is always um, in dB microvolt and, and dBm. So, so whatever, whatever the PFD limits um, coming from the, 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 um, from the authority, we can translate it into DBM and into DBU, okay? So there's under the tools here, we have RF calculator, field strength converter. So use that field strength converter to translate, to translate from whatever unit to our unit, okay? So most of planning tools are, are comfortable with, uh, especially planning tools like um, um, generic tools, they have um, um, DBM and DBU, the, the, the units they use. So DB microvolt is a field strength unit and DBM is um, 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 a power unit. So we always, we use zero DBI as a reference antenna for the DBM um, calculations. So, um, so yes, so we cannot change our unit. Uh, however, you can change here, the, this, this text here, this label. So that label, you could say, um, this is, um, um, what was it um, in the presentation? I could say this is equivalent to neg 91, okay? So you can say here's neg 91 uh, dB what is it? dB what, um, dB what per square meter per megahertz. So this is equal to this. Was there any other questions, um, Farad? Um, you know, we also have some questions about the uh, resolution of the sweep. So basically, when you have the earth station sweep, antenna sweeping, uh, what's the resolution of this uh, sweep? So the, 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 the res, it's a good question. Um, it's a good question, especially if, if the beam width is, if, it, if the beam width for big dishes, like if the beam width is under one degree, um, so um, I believe the tool is using, especially with that function here, we should actually double check this, but uh, I believe this one is running with the one degree precision, okay? Now, you could, you could push the tool to go more than one degree, but I believe it's one degree. You could push it for more than one degree, but I mean, 
with the 20 minute resolution or 30 minute resolution, it may not make too much uh, um, um, a difference. But if you're using high res, high res um, mapping, like if somebody if somebody have to use 3D maps because he wants to use a, a building model, real building model, and so on, then yeah, maybe. But yes, I mean the answer to this is one degree. And if somebody doesn't like it or he thinks should be better, you should send in, send an email. We can make a point to the um, to the programmer, and then we can probably update it. Okay, thanks. And also, just clarifying, um, using the beam steering feature, uh, is it a good idea for uh, uh, air station coverage validation? Um, it, um, it, it, it does produce um, very similar results, especially in the, especially in the, uh, in the front, the front of the antenna. So B BSR is made for different purposes um, in the software. This is the BSR, by the way. So it, the idea is to use adaptive antenna concept, okay? So it, the software will steer the beam in the same way from X degree to Y degree, and then uh, uh, um, and then um, 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 capture the, the strongest signal position. But I found it doesn't do uh, a, 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 a good job in the backlog, in the backlog or side logs of the antenna. So that's why I do not advise it, okay? But it will produce uh, uh, compatible results in the frontage of the antenna, but in the back, it, it will not produce the same results. The best, the, the, the best is to use this signal, the coverage for NGSO. For, co for, for, for NGSO, you better use the coverage technique, this one. Thanks, Ayo. And we had also a question about the um, antenna pattern is it using the same uh, values for azimuth and elevation? Um, I guess it's using the ITU uh, recommendations. So uh, again, what's the question again? The, is the uh, uh, horizontal and vertical values the same? Using the same value for horizontal and vertical attenuation? Uh, I think I think talking about symmetry, the symmetry of the uh, of the pattern. Yes, because we are using par parabolic antenna. And it has symmetrical pattern. So, so if you if you swing uh, twenty degrees, I mean half a degree left or half a degree right, it will give you the same value. So the answer is, is yes, it is symmetrical. The ITU model that we use, um, which is um, the um, uh, fourteen twenty eight, uh, is is symmetrical model. Thanks, Ayman. Was there more questions? Uh, yeah, just uh, if this uh, going to webinar are going to be available later on at the recording of the webinar. I believe so. Yeah, there's, there's no reason not to. Um, we are we are working on a platform where we can uh, people can sign up uh, as uh, subscribers and then uh, receive this uh, future webinars and also access to them at the, at the platform. So they will, will be able to track this information. And watch it at, at their convenience. So the recording has already been done. Uh, it's running now. So it, yeah, should be okay. Thanks, Aya. Yeah. I think that's pretty much it. I don't have any more questions. Anyone wants to ask a live question? Uh, it's also welcome. All right then. Um, I think that's it for this webinar. I hope you guys uh, have enjoyed it, and please do follow up if you have questions uh, in regarding to the process or if you have feedback, we could improve it next time. So uh, again, guys, I mean, the idea was not to teach you AWL licensing. The idea was to show you how you could use a tool, off-the-shelf tool, to get the job done, to translate these um, 911 parameters <laughs> uh, criteria into uh, something useful in the planning tool. So that's it for today, and um, we'll talk to you um, soon, future webinars. Bye.